Okay, so here's the front of the house. You're at the end of a street in like a semi cul-de-sac. So it's a very big lot. So let me just scan the street for you. So I'm in the cul-de-sac. I call it a cul-de-sac. It's like a half cul-de-sac. So the street like makes a U goes that way. It's a very long driveway. I told her husband it can fit about six cars. Just the way the house sits really far back. And remember I told you this is in a, um, a, a low flood zone area, but the house sits kind of up, which is maybe why it's never flooded before. But I am getting that flood insurance report just to make sure that they are in fact telling us the truth about that. So I'm still getting that information and I'll have that Monday morning. It is brick on the first floor all the way around. This is your front door. When you open the door, it's very uh, high ceilings. You walk in to the stairs, dining room, and you see your uh, living room. So I'll pan slowly here. The fireplace is nice. It's got a little bench and it's uh, floor to ceiling brick. You have a view of the pool. They have special screens on the window that keep the sun out because it looks like the sun comes in through these windows, but they've got um, blackout screens. So you can see out, but you can't see in from that side of the window. And it gives you, um, you can leave your blinds open, but not to worry about the sun beating in for the heat. So it keeps the heat out. Everything's been painted this neutral color. The kitchen cabinets are all painted white. And you have a breakfast area over there. So your kitchen table goes there. Then I'm staying in the dining room filming this. It's gonna need some um, help down like the tile work when y'all wanna replace the tile. Little gap down there. So the cabinets look nice and white. You have a little pantry over there. Um, obviously the stove needs to be replaced. Little pantry there. Nice big area for eating. You can put some stools here. View all the way to the back door here. You have a little step down that goes into the living room. So there's the living room. This room feels really big just because the ceilings are so tall. I'll see them back here. And then it overlooks, it's got a neat view just with all the different hand rolls. And you have a half bath, which is nice. Not all the homes this age have a half bath. So you have two and a half bath, two full, one half. And you have a little um, sink, wet bar area, like the olden homes used to have. You have your utility room that goes out to your garage. The garage is extra big. Let me show you. So the garage is, um, Two car garage, but it's got extra storage space to the side. So you have room to park your cars in here and have storage. I believe it has a gas and electric hookup for your um, gas dryer, so that's good. You have a fireplace in your bedroom and the living room. So this is the bedroom. It's uh, very long, so I guess you'd put your bed between those two wall lamps that do work. I'll show you. So you have a wall lamp, so you put your bed that way. And then you have a closet here. That's your first closet. And for this size home, you have a very big bathroom. 
or for this age of home, I should say. So let me step back. Very big bathroom. Um, looks like they put in a new vanity, but it is chipped right there. So maybe you could uh, fix that. But you have a nice deep tub, nice window just for extra storage. And you have a skylight, which is really nice. You have a walk-in shower, a separate toilet room with a separate door, which is nice. A van, um, utility closet, and then another closet, a walk-in closet for her. He gets the, the small one in the bedroom. Okay, so that's this room. This fan's not bad, but the, um, this is the, the fan you're probably gonna wanna replace because it still has like the, the brass on it. This one's not bad. The fan in the kitchen might want to, might need replacing, it's kind of old. But everything else looks really good as far as the paint and the um, baseboards and everything. It's all doable. So upstairs you have two bedrooms, brand new carpet too, smells good. You have two bedrooms, full bath, and a game room. And good, good storage up here. So when you walk up, you have a big landing area. There's your full bath a game room or media room, whatever you want it to be. You have a smaller bedroom right here with just a normal closet. It does that, closes like that. And then this light doesn't work, so that's clearly something we're gonna have to ask to fix, but um, there's a linen closet, the vanity, Window keeps it lit. I don't know, full bath with built in shelves. Window for light, that's good up here. Nice big game room with the walk in closet. Another old fan you want to replace. Those blinds aren't bad. Nice walk in closet. At some point, you're probably gonna wanna update the windows because they're not the um, double pane windows, but they're, they're fine for now. And this light doesn't work either. So could be the bulb, the bulb is out or it could be there's something wrong with electricity up here. So we need to check that out. But this is the front bedroom upstairs. It looks out over the driveway, has a walk-in closet. Has a nice view out the front. It's a really nice street. It's a good location, a huge lot. Now let me take you to the best part downstairs outside. And this is your view from upstairs. It's neat architecture with the different um, ceiling slopes and stuff. The backyard is huge. You can tell these people liked being outside. So you have an enormous covered patio and a big backyard. So I'm gonna go back here on the corner. So here we are in the back corner. It's good y'all get to see this on a pretty day. There's your pool equipment. You see the big patio. Nice big trees. Get some good shade back here. It does have a sprinkler system. Nice patio has been added onto the house. So it's totally an extension of the house. 
gutters all around up there, which is good. So it's not coming off your, um, the rain doesn't come off right here off the uh, patio. Then you have this stamped concrete. Huge pool. I'm not sure how deep it is, but we can ask. But it probably starts over here at three feet. You have a sun deck, which I really like. It's about two to three inches. So you have a sun deck. And then you step down. It starts at three feet for sure. Three feet. And then it gets deeper. This is probably like eight feet, possibly nine. It's a very big pool. And you have your hot tub back here. And then over here, looks like they had some lights hanging on these poles, but there's a little fire pit. This fence needs to be replaced right there, it's leaning. Here's the hot tub. Overall, the plaster looks pretty good from what I can see, but part of when you buy a house with a pool, you have to get a pool inspection, or at least I highly recommend one. So on top of your home inspection, which is going to run you about $350 or $375, you're going to want a pool inspection that's going to be around maybe, I think about $200. Um, I highly recommend you get that. Um, you're also going to want a termite inspection. That's about $100. So um, to get in, once you sign your contract, the way it works is we first will do an um, option period for 10 days. And um, for that option period, you'll put down about $250 just to keep the house off the market. And then, let me see, let me turn this around. Um, after that, you're going to, um, during that 10 day option period, you'll get all your inspections done. Um, the, the, the inspection's going to be about $375 for the house, approximately $200 for the pool, and $100 for termites. And then you'll also be putting down 1% of the listing of the offer price. So if you offer $250, it would be $2,500. You're going to be putting down 1% in earnest money. Now, the earnest money you will get back if you decide to get all um, out of the contract. But that does go towards your closing. So, um, however much you were planning on putting down, that um, twenty five hundred will go towards your closing cost. So that is something that um, all that stuff, the earnest money and the option fees, will be due within the first three days of signing the contract. So that's what we um, will be doing over the next three days if y'all decide to put an offer in on this home. Um, just want to give y'all make sure y'all understand what, what's happening and how it happened so quickly. And then if we can get y'all here on Saturday, um, we'll have the inspection done by the time y'all get here because I will get that done this week um, if y'all win this bid. And if y'all decide to go through with this offer, I will be having the lender, uh, Matt Westervelt, call the listing agent and really um, talk you guys up to, um, to the listing agent to tell them that you know, you're qualified and we're working with y'all and that he's a good lender, well qualified. Uh, it will help, and I've done this before, and it has helped. So, you know, we don't know what the offers are coming in. I don't know if they're um, conventional or if they're above all asking price. You know, we just don't know. So um, don't get disappointed if this isn't the, the house that you actually win the offer on. There's more out there, so let's just um, take this one step at a time and... If, it, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That's how I always look at it. If there's anything else you want to look at out of that collection, y'all let me know. I'd be happy to um, go look at any other houses for you and, and do this same thing. So we'll see what happens later. Y'all give me a call with any questions. Have a good day. Bye.